Hi everybody. So we are on day 39. The high in my area today is 44 degrees of 44 to 46 degrees. So we're sticking with the teal. Um, the next row we're gonna do one double crochet in the first space, three double crochets in every space all the way to the end. In the last space, we're gonna do two double crochets and chain three. Um, today I thought I would share some Reddit stories with you so you won't hear music. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and I hope you have a great day. This story is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and the title is, Oh, you won't let me do my job? Okay then. I'm currently working at a small office doing customer service to finance university. Last summer, I got assigned with a new superior when my old one went on maternity leave. Mind you, at this time, I had been doing my job for close to two years. Every colleague said that I was doing a great job, my error quota was really low and so on. So my primary task is answering the phone to help customers with all different kinds of questions they have. Secondary tasks include answer, oh, include handling the mail, check-in application forms, etc. If I don't know an answer, I'll transfer the customers to the next level support, which is really just my colleagues without a fixed term contract. The guy I was assigned to is the most aggressive micromanaging dude one could imagine. He insisted on sitting next to me for a six hour shift to supervise how I talked to people. Pretty sure that was illegal since he could hear every customer call with me. Since that made me incredibly nervous and I told him that, I was very careful and hesitant with my support on that particular day. Other colleagues told him about how satisfied they were to work with me, but he still decided that I was too incompetent to give out qualified answers beyond first level support. Well, that's how my new supervisor decided that I wasn't good enough at my job and forbade me to give out information on my own without double checking with the next level support. In this case, him and some other colleagues first. Let's just say that in my pettiness, I have redirected every phone call that falls into his domain straight to his phone for the last few months. His call quota went from roughly two to three calls a shift to about 20. Whenever he's not in his office or doesn't pick up his phone, every customer gets his work mail address so he can answer stuff properly since I am too incompetent to give out answers I have known by heart for two years. Oh, and since he also forbade me to do things simultaneously, i.e. answering the phones while working through application forms, etc., because that would increase my error quota, never happened. I collected a nice amount of overtime. Overtime hours aren't paid out where I live, meaning you have to take days off to get rid of them. I am currently eligible to leave roughly three months before my contract ends, so I have no vacation plus overtime left when my last day arrives. That's three months of him having to do my full-time job because he can't get another student to do it before my contract officially ends. Edit. Forgot to mention that I do my little shtick with him and him only. Whenever a call falls into the domain of other coworkers, I still do my job as usual. All right, that's the story and here's some comments. In the future, when someone pays you a verbal compliment, do not ask them if they're willing to take a moment and put it in writing to your email. Put that email in the compliments folder, save them up. Do this with colleagues and customers. If it ever comes up again in the future that our boss is being a donkey and insisting you're no good at your job, you have a ready-made history of all these competent and lovely people complimenting you on your interactions with them, perhaps extending back years. Also helps later on as you can go back to them at a future date and say, you paid me a compliment on X date for X matter and I thank you for that. Is it possible that as I look around at other work that I can use you as a customer work colleague or ref work colleague reference? Um, that was a great idea. Um, let's go to another comment. Let's 
says story time. Oh, this com comment is a story. So I worked for this small manufacturing company. I was the right hand to the owner and did everything non-production production like HR, purchasing, bookkeeping, etc. The owner hired some woman he was really hot after. She was very pretty and very stupid. Let's call her Bambi. Bambi was supposed to take calls for a handful of commercial clients while I handled hundreds of retail in addition to everything else. This was a time sensitive industry. Now the owner had a policy that we did not take messages or use voicemail. If a customer called, they were helped. If they needed stuff, you gave out the employee's mobile number. That included the owner. But if I understood these policies were in place because the owner hated the customers and hated talking to them. Also, I was very good on the phone. I was that older lady in the office that knew everything and would always help you. Bambi took 90 minute lunches. And when she was in the office, she frequently was out on the production floor flirting with the guys in the shop. It pissed me off because I was balls to the wall busy, often dirty, and she stood around flipping her hair. She simply refused to answer her phone. I complained about this to the owner who did nothing about it because Bambi was hot. I found out later she was the second highest paid employee. So instead of helping the commercial customers when they called in for a status of their order, which I knew and could answer, I started simply transferring the calls to Bambi. When she didn't answer, they would call me back. Instead of helping them, I asked them if they had tried texting the owner to find out when their order would be ready. Many times it was sitting on my desk. The owner would call me 10 minutes later and ask me to deal with the customer. Sure thing, boss. Call back, help the customer. This went on for months. I gave every commercial customer his mobile number instead of calling the office. Customers skipped all of that and texted him. So one day I heard him yelling at Bambi, asking her why he is having to deal with her customers. You can believe when it made his life horrible, he fixed it. Bambi quit and stole all his commercial clients. Clients. Wow. And let's go one more comment. Served as he wished. Nice way to go out and still with an order. Another comment is what a mastermind plan to really put him in his place by doing everything he asked. So what do you think of that story? Was that malicious compliance you can agree with? Hope you enjoyed it. So this story is from the subreddit, Am I the Butthole? So the title is, Am I the Butthole for Leaving My Son's Wedding Early After He Excluded Me From His Speech? I have a 23-year-old son, Justin, who got married two weeks ago. I wasn't physically involved in Justin's childhood because his mom and I got separated and I had to travel a lot for work, so his stepdad was more available than I was. During his teenage years, Justin started having fights with me, saying stuff like I prioritize work over him, that I'm a Disney parent, but I was never there for the hard times, even though I provided for him financially, but claim that it's only because the law made me, which isn't true at all. And I strongly believe his stepdad was feeding him lies. In the past three years, Justin started coming around and I met his then girlfriend, now wife. When I heard that they were getting married, I decided to offer paying for the venue and Justin seemed very appreciative of it. My wife and I attended the wedding and all went well, except when Justin started giving a speech, he kept talking about his mom and stepdad and nowhere did he mention me, not even with a single word of recognition. I was hurt and devastated. I couldn't help but feel this way. I tried acting normal and keep my composure, but I felt so heavy. I decided to leave the wedding early. I went home and broke down, but then I calmed down. Justin called asking why I left so early. I said I felt sick, but he kept pushing till I told him that I got upset that he didn't mention me or recognize me in his speech. And he said that I was being ridiculous to get upset over that. I asked him to respect how I felt, but he argued he wasn't going to lie to make me happy. I asked what he meant because as far as I know, part of his wedding was paid for by me. He said I was unavailable, then hung up. I called again and we fought on the phone after I told him that I felt unappreciated and disrespected. He said he owed me exactly nothing, then hung up. We haven't talked ever since and my wife says I went too harsh on Justin and should apologize for disrespecting his wedding and not showing support by leaving like that. Am I the butthole? So some comments. 
I wasn't physically involved in Justin's childhood, so there's really no memories to even mention you in a speech. Justin started having fights with me, saying stuff like I prioritize work over him. He's right. By your own admission, you weren't there. You don't get to get mentioned in a speech. Of course you're the idiot. Or the butthole. Next comment says, it is also funny that OP demands that his son respects how he feels. But when his son was a teenager and expressed how he felt, it was all because the lies of the stepfather and he didn't accept his feelings. He seems to always, he seems to always thought that money is enough to be a good father. Ridiculous. He should have been happy to be included in the wedding at all, but no. All he cared was me, 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 not his son and his happiness. You are the butthole. We'll read one more comment. This one says, alternative title. Am I the butthole for trying to buy my son's love? Spoiler alert, yes. So what do you think about that story? I hope you enjoyed this one as well.